Hey guys, Daddy Grass here and I'm gonna do a video about uh, winterizing or blowing out your sprinkler system. I just got back from GIE. I got some cool swag. I got to meet the Lawn Care Knot, uh, Jake the Lawn Kid, Ryan Knorr, uh, and so many other people. Uh, it was just mind-blowing. Um, and it was really cool meeting them all in person. So I'm gonna have to do like a, a video of basically what went on for that. Um, but when I got home, I was looking at the Rhode Island Lawn Care Nut Facebook group that some guys started and they were talking about frost. And I looked at the weather and we're gonna have some below freezing weather coming up soon, which technically I don't have to winterize and blow this out right now but some of you farther up north might need to do it. So I'm gonna do the video to show you how to do it. Um, so what you first have to understand is, you know, just because it's uh, below freezing in the air doesn't mean the ground is below freezing yet. The lines and everything should be about a foot underground. So it's not necessary to do this out at the first sign, but as it starts to get colder or starts to become a pattern, then you're gonna to wanna to do a couple of things. The first is uh, if you have any outdoor plumbing you see this guy over here now this is very shielded from the wind but some people will have it on a spot where it gets a lot of wind and so they'll there's different things you can put over it to insulate it some people will just put a blanket um, what i'll do personally if i'm not blowing out the whole thing is i'll drain this from water and uh, that way at least this part up up here is not filled with water um, but that part could freeze before the rest of it can, so you gotta watch out on that. Um, but if you're like me, you're like, all right, the lawn's slowing down. We've been getting pretty good water. Uh, I've got the stuff to do it myself. So if I need to water the lawn for the winterizer application of fertilizer, I can run the water through it and then blow it all out again. And it's pretty easy to do. This is my first year doing it. I already did it once just to make sure I, I uh, had the right stuff going and I'll show you how easy it is. But first, you gotta turn the water off inside. Um, now, my system has this doohickey here, so you can stick a tool in here and twist it and turn it off there, but um, that's all great and everything. But what I like to do is shut it off inside completely. I'll show you how to do that. All right, so if you follow the pipe, you can see sort of in there, there's a valve there. But if you follow it down, there's also a valve right here. And you see it's going with the pipe, so the flow, I look at it as like the flow director, and it's going with the flow. Now, to stop the flow, you twist it either way, whatever way it goes, and now it's cut off, the water is cut off. And so now when I'm doing the rest of the video, you know more water isn't going into the system and you also know you're not blowing any water and potential contaminants back down into your water supply. So that's, before you do anything else, do that so you don't forget because you don't want to mess up your whole plumbing system with contaminated water. All right, the next step is you're gonna want an air compressor that can handle the job. Now this is the one I got. It was pretty cheap, it was on sale. Tractor Supply, it's got five uh, SCFM. Oh, I can't think right now, it's been a crazy few days. So, uh, but basically at 90 PSI, it'll do five uh, something cubic feet per minute. Now we're not gonna be blowing it at 90 PSI, so that means that number will be higher. And you wanna get as high of this number as you can. Um, obviously, if you can't afford anything bigger, like me, this was the biggest I felt comfortable buying. So, uh, you know, it just barely will do my system. Now, if you can't afford that, you can still sort of do it, but you're gonna, it's gonna take a lot more work, and I'll show you why. Um, and then, you see the tank. Where's the stats? I lost the paper already. I think it was like 21 gallons. Um, the bigger the tank, the better. Uh, I see some people using the little uh, donut ones. If you have a tiny yard, that might work. Um, but the problem with doing that, and I'll, I'll, I'll um, you know, be frank with you, is if you're blowing, let's see, say, say this is the tube of water, 
if you're blowing a small volume of, of air through it, it will clear out the top layer, but then it will still have this big layer of water in the pipe. And so if you don't have a powerful enough one with enough tank volume, then it's not gonna push the entire stack of water, it's just gonna create a channel. And so you can start it, stop it, start it, stop it, and it's basically a, you know, a pipe of air on top of the water that's blowing the sprinkler. So you think you got it all, but you didn't. And then what can happen is, uh, it might not happen the first season, you might get away with it, but one year you might have a really heavy winter and there'll be cracks and little leaks. Um, and then you can end up having flooding in random spots of your lawn. Um, you know, sometimes you'll see people with the, uh, the bubbles in the lawn and stuff like that. That can be one reason, I mean, stuff fails because of old age anyways but if you're doing it the wrong way year after year you're gonna wear that stuff down quicker so that's why you know this is a little bit overkill by some people's standards but actually if you go by manufacturers and stuff they'll even say this is not enough volume to properly do it. I think they want like 11 or 15 now if you're doing it professionally you're gonna want that massive one because just time wise you want to blow it all out at once um, but homeowners we can take our time and save some money so this one cost me about 350 bucks, but around here to get the professionals to blow it out costs 100 bucks a pop. So after three or four years, I paid it back and now I have an air compressor, which I've been meaning to get one for years, but it's just, you know, I, I wanted, to, wanted to wait until I figured out exactly which one I got and this was on sale. So I was like, all right, and it's, it's a good unit, so. All right, now you're gonna to need to plug it into a good electrical source because it uses uh, 15 full amps. I plugged it into uh, a random outlet that um, had other stuff plugged in and it popped the circuit. So technically, you're not supposed to use extension cords, but I've got a really heavy duty one that works. So I'm gonna plug it in. Now read your manual on how you, you, you are supposed to use this stuff. Um, you're gonna to wanna to have this set to about 50 PSI if you're doing the flex stuff. So if you got this black tubing powering your system, you don't want to do high PSI, you want to do lower. If you're doing, if you have all PVC, that's the one that can take higher pressures. Um, but I just, I keep it at 50 and you'll see on my longest run, this actually ends up being perfect. Uh, let's get this started up though, cause it takes some time to start it up. Uh-oh, what happened? Just kidding. So we'll kick it on, make sure nothing's in the way. This one uses oil, so you gotta check the oil, some don't. It's not that big of a deal, but just a reminder. Oh, it's not plugged in. Boop. All right, inside the secret grass daddy office with high, uh, higher uh, load outlets for Bitcoin miners and stuff like that. All right, we got the power we need. A little distracted. So we're gonna wait for that to go up. All right, so while we're waiting for that to go, uh, you're gonna want one of these guys. This is basically a hose and adapter. This goes to the air hose. I got the one with the valve. It's not really necessary, but I figure I've got this. There might be other uses in the future that I want to use it for, and having the easy valve on it just works, so I, I think it was a couple bucks different. I'll put the links of all this stuff that I'm using uh, on the Amazon wishlist page so you can see exactly what I'm using. Um, but it's real simple. I'll show you how to uh, hook it up. So on my system, we got a hose right here. You might have to do uh, other stuff if yours doesn't. There's all sorts of adapters. Um, but you just open this guy up. Look, I'm doing this left-handed. Screw this guy on. And then here's the key. Again, you remember that's, that's open. You want it closed so you can gradually open it you don't want to hammer the system with high pressure. That's how you break stuff. So that's good. Right, again, one-handed. Boom. Perfect. All 
right, so there's two things at play going on here. There's the PSI, there's the volume, there's the tank. Now, because the pump can't just push out the water as is, it's going to have some reserve in there. What I'm doing is I'm filling up the tank higher pressure than we need, and so that'll give you more time where it's pushing out low pressure, it's got backup reserve, um, and for my size system, it just barely fills out the longest run in my system before it runs out, and then you gotta wait for it to charge up again, and then you do the next one, and you wait for it. Um, so the key is to wait till it stops running, because you know the tank is at its full, fullest level, and go from there. So, take some time. And there we go. All right, now the next step. All you gotta do is turn on the farthest uh, sprinkler head zone that you've got. Now, if you don't know, there, you can basically just cycle through a few times. So let's get that going. All right, so first, you want to turn the station on. That's farthest. Now, usually it's the biggest number, so I got five zones. I'm gonna hit, it's running, see it's going, and then I'm just gonna slowly open it up. And you can see the sprinklers are starting to go. Now, this line goes all the way around the house, back to here, so it's got a lot of water in those pipes, which is why you want the big tank or high volume to be able to handle this. And again, I'm doing this at 50 PSI. You can see it's, the sprinklers are shooting as far as they're supposed to. Uh, so you don't need to go crazy with the PSI. If you do, when those pop on, they can actually shoot out and you can just break them or the lines inside can uh, bust open and start leaking. So now you just wait to start. You'll, you'll see and hear the change. Uh, this one down here usually is first, so I'll try to go here. Oh, I think that one's dirty. Look at that. Spraying sideways. So, this one is the closest, so it, it, it empties first, and then the water still has to push through the rest. And it's pretty obvious when the, the air is coming through. See how fast it's starting to spin? Now one's starting to do it. These ones over here, it's still just water. Now you can hear the compressor has kicked on. So it's, it's gone below its threshold, it's gonna start catching up. But it's still got enough pressure to keep these guys going. You can tell this is still just water, no air yet, but the pressure is getting down there. That one over there is going super fast. All right, you can hear this one change into air. All right, that one's going to air. So the one over here is basically completely dry and you don't want to run it too much with just air because that air will start heating up the gears and it's moving so fast. Um, so you don't want to go too long with it but 
you do need to get the water out of these guys. And you can see the head was starting to move because it's starting to lose the pressure. Feel this. It's got some water in it. You can see it dripping off my hand, so I wanted to run this a little bit longer. But it's starting to feel better. Up oh, and now it's starting to fall down because it's not got enough pressure. So I'll show you what happens when you run out of pressure. farther and farther down. So you see, if you don't have enough volume or pressure, they'll shrink back down. Now, if you're not able to get all, I, I feel pretty confident that I got enough water out of the line, so you don't have to get 100%. You just want most of it out. And so uh, I'll run it again just for demonstrating in the video, but say your uh, compressor wasn't big enough or didn't get all of it out, you would just have to repeat it, but you wanna leave some time in between for those gears and internal seals and everything to cool down, um, especially if you're doing this for a while. Like this guy is working pretty fast and I, you could feel the air was cold, everything was cold. It's kind of a cold day. Uh, but if you're using a smaller machine, it's going to work a lot harder to do that volume so it can actually heat up that air, which makes the gears as they're spinning also heat up because they're used to being in water and cooling down that way. Uh, so again, we're going to wait for it to get up to pressure. We'll do the next one. All right, so now we're going to move to number four so you can stop it. Wait for a little light to stop. Then you come over to station four, run the same thing. All right, come here. You're gonna move that, twist it slowly to the open position, all right? Mm -hmm. Yep. There you go. And now the next zone will be going. See the backyard? It's doing the same exact thing. Oh no, the plants are all gone. My wife got the bulbs all digged up, dug up, whatever you want to say. You can see it's spraying just as far as it normally does. Pressure's good, volume's good. And that one's already got the air. We're in like organizing all the kids stuff, garden stuff mode, trying to figure out what we're tossing, what we're keeping. So hopefully next year the lawn will look a little bit better. Oh, that one's starting to go. I mean, this is all you do. It's When you hire someone, they do it quick because they've got way more volume, but you can do it on a cheaper system. You just, you know, I would not use those tiny little ones. Um, it just doesn't push enough. <clears throat> that one's already going to the air. You can see this one over here is squirting air and then shoots of water and this one's mostly water but getting some air. So same thing, we're just gonna wait for it. And so as you start doing this, the ones closer and closer to you, the main control box, uh, it'll start to recharge the uh, tank faster because it's using less and less air. Um, I went and ate some lunch in between. It doesn't take too long, but 
I eat fast, so. Just gonna wait for the final amount. I'm gonna have to deal with these leaves soon. I'm probably gonna end up bagging them because I don't foresee being able to, oh, I think they all popped down. So we're, we're out of volume and pressure, so. All right, so can you go turn the valve the other way now? Same way, same thing, just put it back to how it was. All right, so she turned off the air supply. All right, you wanna see how to turn off the, the sprinkler? Twist that so it's pointing at the red one, the off one. And then you just wait and you see this will go away. And so that zone's off. So now we just wait for it to fill up again. All right, time for the next one. We did four. So you want to see how to do this? Here, twist that to manual station. All right, then come over here and push that until you get to four. Wait, no, three. There you go, because we just did four. Now hold that button in to start it. Started. Now, same thing here, just go a little bit slower this time. There you go. The last one, it's still got a decent amount of water flowing through here. Oh, now it's switching over, you can hear the change. Starting to lose pressure. Let's see if I can hold it up, that helps it. This still has a decent amount of water in it. All right, they're down, we're gonna you want to go turn it off again? So far so good. Gotta wait for it to charge up again. Yep. If you have a helper, it's a lot quicker. You don't have to keep going back and forth as much. All right, you want to do zone two? See if you can remember how to do all the steps. <clears throat> so I yep. Look at that, didn't even have to remind her of any of the steps.
right, this time it should fill up much quicker because we didn't uh, drain it completely. So overall, this is really easy to do. Uh, you'll save a ton of money over the years if you do it yourself. And as long as you don't do anything crazy, you're not going to break anything. Uh, the people that start to like get the oversized, you know, pumps and stuff, or they set it up to the highest PSI and they just slam it trying to get the water out that way, that's how you break things. Um, you might, again, you might get away with it the first year, second year, but that's making all the, the components wear down much faster. And then if it's a small compressor with a small tank, um, you know, you might be doing the high PSA, which is making everything want to come apart and then not getting all the water out, which is making it start to freeze and expand. And that combo over time wears all the stuff down quicker. Uh, so it's best to get as big of a compressor as you can. Um, I could have gone bigger, but then I need the special wiring for the garage and everything. And right now I just can't do that. Oh boy, a, a honeybee landed on my camera. So I might not ever stop recording because he's on the button and I've gotten stung too many times this year. Oh man, maybe he's going to go on the... Uh, if he goes on the lens, this will be so cool. Oh, he's coming around. Coming up, oh, it's going down. Nah, it's going back. Oh, come on. All right, I'm gonna wait and see if he comes to the front. So close. Come on, do it. Other way, other way. All right, you want to start up zone one while I'm uh, busy watching the bee? Come on, go up. Oh, it's so cool. Oh. If I had my phone, I'd take a picture of him crawling. Oh, there he is. <laughs> Did you get it? We got a little bit. When they're not stinging you, they're fascinating. I'm just waiting to find out it's like a queen bee and we're gonna get bit, get boarded with them soon.
right, so now we're gonna repeat the process, but there should theoretically not be much water coming out. Um, so this one should go pretty quick. But it's just, just to make sure. Let's do this first zone again. So the one I was concerned about back here is right here. That side, barely anything, so we'll see. Last step is to turn these halfway. Just want to go at an angle. Ugh. Forget which way to go. There we go. Want to twist them like that. Twist them like that. And you want to take this off and leave this open, and that'll leave room for everything to expand and contract as the weather changes. And then of course, make sure you set this to off and you're good to go. Now you should keep these plugged in because the uh, electronics will keep it from uh, freezing and breaking. And so you leave it plugged in and it's, it's fine. So that's all, all you gotta do. Thanks for watching Daddy Grass, which is what Matt Martin's son was calling me at GIE the whole time. It was adorable. I won't say his name because I don't know if he says his name on camera or not, but Daddy Grass. All right, I appreciate you guys watching my videos. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up, uh, subscribe, comment, all that fun stuff. It's what makes this uh, really enjoyable and fun making all these videos. And uh, be sure to check out the ones below. Have a great day. Bye.